Hi, I'm Dan Snowden. I'm the executive chef at Bad Hunter here in Chicago. Uh, welcome to Pilot Light Family Meal, where I'll be showing you today how to make fresh pasta at home with no need for fancy equipment. To get started, uh, grab your biggest bowl you have in your kitchen. Um, and I've pre-measured everything out here, uh, but it's gonna be about 250 grams of semolina, durum semolina flour. You can find this at any Mariano's or Italian grocery. Um, it equates to about a cup and a half, uh, but if you have a scale, that's the best way to do it. Throw that right into the bowl. Next is just plain all-purpose flour. I like to use unbleached all-purpose flour. It's about 250 grams, again, so equal parts by weight, semolina and flour. This is about a cup and three quarters, so it's a little bit more um, flour by volume. That goes right in the bowl as well. And then about a half a teaspoon of salt. I like to use kosher salt. Okay, so we'll whisk all that up, make sure it's nice and combined. Good. This recipe uh, for um, noodles, pasta noodles, um, comes from Southern Italy where they don't use a lot of eggs in their um, pasta flour, or pasta dough, excuse me. Um, so it's just flour and water, and that's really it. It's pretty simple. So uh, 210 milliliters, so just a little bit more than 200 milliliters of warm water. Um, so what I do is I make a, a little well in the middle of the flour, pour all the water in. And this is the fun part where you get to get a little dirty, wash your hands. Um, start in the middle and just start mixing in a little bit of flour at a time. Starts going pretty quick. I like to do most of this in a bowl so you don't make a ton of mess in your kitchen. If you have a KitchenAid mixer or a food processor, it's the quick and easy way, the cheating way to do it. But if you wanna do it like a authentic Italian grandmother, try to get your hands in there. If it seems a little dry, you can always add a little bit more water. This one seems a little dry. Just do a little bit at a time. You can cut. All right, so I've incorporated all of the flour that's in the bowl into a nice kind of shaggy dough ball. Put this aside. And now we're going to knead this uh, dough for about eight minutes. So what I do is um, with the, the heel of my palm, I'll push straight down on the dough and kind of push it forward. If you're on a cutting board, just try to hold the cutting board steady. And you're just going to kind of repeat that, turn it about halfway, fold it. Again, pushing all your weight into the dough. Nice little workout. It's gonna seem very tight and like it's not coming together at first. After about five minutes, it'll start making more sense. All right, it's been about eight or 10 minutes and the ball is starting to form. It's still a little bit shaggy, but it's, it's a lot tighter and it's got a little bit of bounce to it. That's what you're looking for. You should be out of breath at this point. Um, so we're going to wrap this up and let it rest for one hour. That's going to let all those starch gluten strands kind of relax and it'll be a lot easier to work with. So plastic wrap, make sure you get all the air out. Okay, so our pasta dough is resting and now let's uh, start making the sauce. So we're just going to make a uh, quick uh, pomodoro sauce or tomato sauce. So took some uh, whole fresh garlic and peeled it. Um, and now we're gonna make kind of like a garlic paste out of that. So what I like to do is first um, slice it pretty thin.
throw a nice hefty pinch of salt right on top of the garlic. And that does is kind of like breaks up all those, um, all the cells and kind of releases all the natural juices and oils. Run your knife through it once. And we're gonna start like smearing it against the uh, cutting board. So what I do is I take my uh, left hand and put it on top of the, the side of the knife and really push down and kind of pull against my cutting board to really smash that garlic. Come a little closer. What you end up with is a, a really nice garlic paste that you don't need a food processor for or anything. I'm gonna heat up a nice heavy uh, pot. I like to use a, like a Dutch oven made out of cast iron. And add about, I don't know, three or four tablespoons of olive oil. Seems like a lot, but it's gonna be a lot of sauce. So the recipe that I wrote down is a pretty small recipe. It's probably about, maybe like a, enough for two people. Um, I'm gonna multiply by four just to make a nice big batch so you can see what it's like. Adding our garlic. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have uh, these really nice San Marzano tomatoes. You can get these at Mariano's. Um, these are the larger cans, the 28 ounce cans. So um, two of those or Four of the 14 and a half ounce cans works good as well. Um, crack these open. Turn the garlic down to low so you don't burn it. We're gonna just kind of crush these up by hand, trying not to make too much of a mess. I want it to be kind of chunky, like a little texture in the tomato sauce, but you don't want any whole pieces. All right, that's good. Okay, so the garlic is nice and toasty, not uh, burnt by any means, but kind of softened and browned. Um, at this point, you're gonna add your tomatoes carefully. So a little trick I like to do so we don't waste anything. So you see there's a little bit of uh, tomato sauce left in the can. So I'll just fill it up with like a cup of water. Just eyeball it. We're gonna turn the heat all the way back up to high. Get a nice boil going. Uh, meanwhile, we're gonna season them with salt, pepper, and some red chili flake. This is all to taste. Um, I'd probably say like a good tablespoon of salt to start with. You can always season a little bit more later. I like it spicy, but you know, do as much or as little as you want. You can always add more later on as well. And then I like a good amount of black pepper as well. Always got fresh crack. Once this is boiling, turn it down to a very low simmer. All right, while the tomato sauce cooks and the pasta dough is resting, I'm gonna pick the basil. I got this really nice uh, local basil from Mariano's. Uh, it is called Bright Farms Basil. I like it because it's already washed, ready to go. So I would say you're just gonna want the leaves. And for that amount of sauce, I don't know, probably about half of this basil. I like to leave, leave a little bit for um, garnishing the pasta after we're done. We're gonna pull it off the stem. And then we're just gonna tear it into pieces. And this is as easy as like kind of scrunching it up into a ball and just ripping it all apart. You wanna kind of bruise the basil to release a lot of the uh, essential oils. I wish you could smell what this smells like. It smells great. Um, and there you have it. Our pasta has been resting for about an hour or so. You can see it's like much more smooth 
lot easier to work with. Um, so what we're gonna do, um, most of us don't have pasta machines at home. So I was trying to think of some shapes that would be fun to, um, to show you that doesn't even require any rolling pins or anything like that. So uh, the first one I wanna show you is Cavatelli. So this is gonna be like a really long Cavatelli. Um, this is, uh, to me it kind of reminds me of like a, like a French green bean shape or something like that. So uh, you're gonna cut the, the end off your dough so it's nice and flat. And then um, cut about, you know, a little less than a quarter inch, I would say, planks from, straight from the, the dough block. When you're working on your pasta, make sure you wrap up the rest of the dough so it doesn't dry out. And then you're gonna cut these into um, long rectangles, about a quarter inch, a little less than a quarter inch. You can see how nice and smooth the dough. The dough seemed like it was super dry to me when I was kneading it, and now it's like really smooth. Um, so I kind of just get those all squared away. And I'll show you how to do a few of these. So depending on the length is, is kind of how many fingers you put onto it, but you want to cover up the whole piece of dough with your fingertips. And you're going to be kind of pushing down and pulling back. And you can really put a, quite a bit of pressure on it. And you're creating all these little dimples with your fingertips in the cut side of that dough. So I'll show you again really slowly. So I'm going to push all the way down and really push and pull back towards me all in the same motion. You see you get all these little dimples. Those are awesome for catching all of that tomato sauce that we're making. Um, it's great. So I'll show a few more. And as the, the pieces get bigger, I throw more of my uh, fingertips onto the dough and they get a bit longer. The goal is you want everything to kind of be the, an even thickness um, throughout the dough. Um, when you when you roll it out. That way it doesn't get too gummy when you're cooking it in the pasta. So what I've also done is I set up a sheet tray here with some parchment paper and a little bit of semolina, the excess semolina that you had from making the pasta dough. And you're just gonna kind of sprinkle the pasta shapes with um, semolina as you're going. And this is just gonna prevent them from sticking while you're working on stuff. This is, you can play with shapes if you have like a cutting board that has ridges in it, or you can get one of these gnocchi boards. They're very easy to find on Amazon or at a knife store. Um, I know Northwest Cutlery down in the West Loop has these for sure. They're super cheap, they're like three bucks or something. Um, what I think about when I'm making cavatelli on um, a gnocchi board is about the, the length of my thumb tip, thumbprint. Um, I'll cut those same little rectangles into about thumbprint size pieces. And you're gonna do the same kind of thing, but you're gonna roll the pasta away from you. This is the same way to make actual like potato gnocchi. So you're gonna do that. And it's the, kind of the same idea, but you get little ridges on it. But you'll see on the inside is nice and hollow, captures all that sauce. The ridges also do the same effect. If you go at an angle, you can get kind of like a spiral dealy going. If I had a nice, some of those gnocchi boards are really big. Um, you can do the whole cavatelli with all your, your fingertips on the gnocchi board and get a nice uh, effect like that. Um, all right, what else can we do? We can also do orchette. This is cool. And this, uh, orchette means uh, little ears in Italian. I'll cut a little thicker piece here. First, we'll kind of roll it out. Cut the little uh, pointy piece off of there. And you want to grab about, I don't know, about a half inch piece um, and kind of turn it up on its side with a just like a butter knife. You're going to push down and pull without breaking that pasta. And then you have this little thing that you kind of Put on your fingertip and flip it inside out, and you have a kit there.
You take the same piece that has already been rolled out, make another noodle shape called peachy. So peachy is actually more of a Northern Italian thing. They'll do a lot of like, uh, sorry, that's my kid in the background. They'll do ragus with peachy noodles, but basically you want to try to roll it out as thin as you possibly can, which go a little so we can cut it in half there. So you want like a really nice thin, almost like a spaghetti, but it's hand rolled. And yes, they actually do this in Italy. You have a whole bowl of hand rolled peachy noodles, which is pretty amazing. There you go. You do those. You can do loriguitas. This is from one of the islands, I can't remember. I think it's Sardinia. So they'll take the noodle, they'll do kind of a peachy kind of thing. They'll wrap it around once, wrap it around again, twice, and then pinch it there. And you have two rings that you kind of like fold in on themselves and twist. You end up with like a nice like ring shaped noodle, like spirals in it. They usually serve it with seafood stew. It's really fantastic. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep making some cavatelli and we'll toss it with some tomato sauce in a minute here. Okay, so the pasta sauce has been reducing for about, I would say, hour or so. Um, it's reduced um, by about a third, I would say. You can see the line where I started, um, maybe almost half. Most importantly, you can see that the olive oil, I did about four tablespoons of olive oil. It's all been emulsified into the sauce. You see it's nice and like, got a nice shine to it, but there's no like pockets of oil floating around. That's really key. At this point, I'm gonna give it a taste. I think we nailed the salt and the pepper. I think it could use a little bit more red chili flake. Then we're gonna add in our basil that we had crushed earlier and, and tore by hand. Put all of that right in there. And then turn the heat off. And that is it. Now, this is a great base to then, you know, braise some pork shoulder in or some short ribs. Um, you can also cook your meatballs in this sauce here. Um, use it as a base for lots of stuff. We're gonna do a pretty simple, just uh, pasta alla pom pomodoro. So our pasta water is boiling. Our pasta is good. Shaped. Um, we're gonna add quite a bit of salt because we have a lot, a lot of water. Because you wanna season the noodles as they cook. I always give it a taste, be careful. It should taste like the same salinity as like soup. People say it tastes like the, the ocean. I think the ocean is way too salty. So I think a nice soup uh, saltiness is perfect. We're gonna just go ahead and drop our noodles in. These are fresh noodles, so they don't take quite as long as like dry noodles that you get at the store. They're a little thicker, a little like more girth to them. So they will take a little bit of time. Meanwhile, we're gonna get our pan ready for our sauce. You always wanna toss fresh pasta in the sauce, almost like dressing it like a salad. Um, I'm gonna start with a little bit of olive oil. Take about, let's say, Ten ounces of sauce or something like that, a little and a half. That going. You see the noodles are starting to float. When that happens, I just usually will give the rest of them a little bit of a zhuzh. Make sure they're not stuck to the bottom or sticking to each other. Even if there are really big chunks of tomato, you can just break them up with your spoon. They're completely cooked and softened at this point, so they should be should be able to break up pretty easily. 
What I like to do is I like to really reduce the tomato sauce down quite a bit so it caramelizes all the sugars in the tomato. Um, and then let it back out with a little bit of the water that we cooked the pasta in. That's where the pasta's been cooking for about five minutes or so. Really let the tomato sauce come down. See how thick it's gotten. It's starting to caramelize a little bit on the edges. To test the pasta, what I'll do, I'll get out just one noodle. This is the tricky part. It's too hot to handle. Give it a cut. Take a look at the inside. And you can see how it still looks a little raw in the middle. And when we try it, it still needs like maybe another minute or two, if that. I'm gonna scrape any of those like nice brown bits that the tomato is leaving right into that sauce. I have it on fully high heat. Don't be afraid to let it like slightly burn a little bit because all that nice uh, caramelization will go into the sauce. Pretty good. These should be about done. Pull it out of the water. Turn it down a bit. I'm gonna take a little bit of that cooking liquid, the pasta liquid. Add that to the sauce. An old mentor of mine, Erling Wubauer, now the executive chef at uh, Pacific Standard Time, um, would drill into us that we had to shape, uh, toss the pasta a minimum of 30 times. Anybody who worked at Nico with me back in the day is all gonna get a nice chuckle about uh, 30 times minimum. Um, but it's true, what happens is all the starch in this pasta, as you're tossing it, will really release into the sauce. It's a little dry. So I'm gonna add a little more water. It's a nice medium heat. So you want the, the sauce to be a little bit looser than what you want to end up with. Um, and you just start tossing it together. If you can't toss, if you don't know how to do this, um, take your spoon and kind of put it in the middle of the, the pan. And as you're shaking it back and forth, kind of stir at the same time. It'll have a very similar effect. Just count to 30 in your head um, or set a timer. But as long as you have really released a lot of those starches that are in the pasta, because you haven't really added any fat yet, any butter or cheese, and it's starting to get really creamy. You'll see how like the creaminess looks. It's looking pretty good. At this point I'll add some butter. Um, I'll turn the heat to low or off at this point. I always want to add the cheese when the, the heat's on low. A little bit of freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano. Kind of a few last tosses to combine it. Give it a taste. Pepper. We're gonna go to the plate. Finish it off with a lot more. Fish parm. Basil. 
and a nice glug of extra virgin. There you have it. It's cavatelli a la pomodoro. Thanks for joining me. Tag us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at Pilot Light Chefs, hashtag PL Family Meal, and visit the Food Education Center and click on Family Resources for today's recipe, additional activities to do related to today's recipe, and for additional family lessons and videos. We want to know how you and your family are enjoying this recipe and making it together. So tag us. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Pilot Light Chefs, hashtag PL Family Meal.